Well, hello, folks. Welcome back to the channel. I am the Custard Prophet, and we're back here for our Tennis Manager 24 save. We're back here following Taps McGeegan at the uh, at Custard Tennis, and uh, it's a big one today. We, he has qualified for his first junior major tournament in Australia, and uh, we're going to follow on to see how he gets on. He couldn't possibly, well, he could only have got a couple of harder draws. It's an absolute beast of a draw in the first round, but fingers crossed uh, things will um, go well. So this is the draw that uh, he has got. He's going to be playing Kazakhstani Amir uh, Omarkhanov, who is third in the world. Now, he has not beaten anybody of anything like this quality before. It's he, he's, His best win, I think, come, comes against, uh, I think it was a world 20, number 27 or something like that. Not even that. The world number 35, which 35th, who he beat in the previous tournament. That was his best ever victory against, or low, against the highest ranked player or lowest ranked player, whichever way your mind works with that so he certainly proved he can win against a top 50 player the jury out though is if he can win against a top 10 player and he's going to find out that today I suspect it's not he's not going to be good enough to uh, achieve this but I think we had to come back for this because it's um, it doesn't get more uh, important than this it's a real marker of his progression that he's he's actually playing at this level um, and he's not actually that he's 18th and he's not actually that far away from being seeded. And that would have made a massive difference. Yes, it would have meant that he would have played this player in the round of 16. But that's still, you know, it's it's a couple of rounds in. Um, and Krusty obviously, and Taps obviously would want to get his victory in this this tournament. Because this is, this is what it's all about, isn't it? So we have a thousand points at stake. 15 grand in prize money at stake. All of which would be absolutely crazy. We do get one one thousand two hundred pounds just for just appearing in the, in the draw, so that's nice. But oh, just anywhere else, it would have been better. Anywhere else, I guess we're going to have to do it. In the comments, before we go out there, how badly is he going to lose in this first match? So he is uh, Amir. Osmakarov is in excellent form. His win rate on hard is 68%, which is a worry. He's a power player, and I think we're just gonna we're gonna go with what's worked previously. We might just up our wide serves a little bit, just a, just a wee bit, uh, just to try and get the most out of them, and we'll see how things go. I don't know how he matches up in terms of his his ability, but. Actually, a mental state is looking pretty good. So there we go. Uh, we relaxed him, but didn't actually manage to relax him more than he already was. Right, let's see how this goes. First set. Is Taps going to be able to um, push this player a little bit? Well, he's got the first point. That's something at least. It's one all, and Taps has already come up against one of the problems he's going to face. And this is a very, very difficult um, abilities of this player. Love 40 and taps off the top of the racket. He gives up a break. So it's 2-1 down. Early break against. I think this is going to be hard, folks. Well, unbelievably, it's 5-4, but taps actually has a chance here to take a break. To get back. Oh, it's into the net. Imagine. Imagine if he got it back to 5 or how good that would have been. Well, it's gone the other way. It's an advantage to the Kazakhstani. But I have to say, Taps has done really well on his serve. And it's another one off the top of the racket. The worst possible time. And, uh, well, Taps loses that first set. But it is not a bad performance at all. 6-4 against the third in the world is really not bad. And he did get a break point, And he didn't give away too much else. Let's have a look. 45% of the points. But let's not forget... On the one service game where he lost, his, where, where, he, where he was broken, he gave up lots and lots of points. So we can see here where the issue is on the returns, 5%, 24%. So, But you look at the other side, it's not much better. So um, I think we need to be a bit more aggressive on those second serves when we get the opportunity. We'll, we will try that. I don't know how we can be more aggressive. 
Let's go deep on the backhand and we'll go hard. Let's just really go at him. Let's go. Can we take this? It'd be amazing if we could. No, we can't. 15-40 down. Another break opportunity given up. And taps with a lovely shot there. Can we... Using all the court here. It's gone along with that one though. 30-40. Just don't want him to lose this one really right at the start. And that one's gone off the top of the racket as well. So maybe Taps holding on to this first service game. Maybe not. It's an advantage against. Gives me a lot of hope though this does. Being able to compete at this level. feels like I did feel we were considerably off the pace but maybe not maybe not let me know your thoughts that's a lovely shot and that's the difference you play in the right shot at the right time and that's another breakdown so but can taps get a break that would be something wouldn't it he's got another break opportunity 30 40 putting the pressure on but yeah I mean he got the service back but that was just put away. And unfortunately, it's just been two sets, two games in each set, one game in each set where he has struggled. The rest of the time, it's been perfectly fine. So yes, it is a loss. It's a very short episode, but, but folks, I think there's a lot of hope there, a real lot of hope. Don't know why I'm here. This is, the 3D analysis. I don't even know what I'm looking at there, so we will go. We will go through to here. It's been a bit of a game. You put on a great show, which I think is fair, <laughs> but maybe he doesn't want to hear that. He's slammed the locker room door and run out. So uh, yeah, a little bit frustrating. Let's just. Um, I'm going to set up the uh, training for this part of the um, this week. Now we're out of the uh, tournament, and then we'll come back at the end of it, and we'll see who's won. So just as a little um, way to show how I've been setting up training, which might be useful, when I do change things, I basically put care all across the centre. And then what I do is typically have a orange or red training, so something that's high-intensity training, where I've just got one of those in a day, and then maybe an orange and then a yellow. So something with weak intensity, medium intensity um, going together. But I alternate those over the, over the week such that, um, now typically if, it, if I hadn't played a match, I'd have had three, two session days to one session days, but I've gone the other way for this particular week just because we've played a match. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I do my training. Right, folks, uh, let's go forward and see who wins the tournament. So we've um, gone all the way out and it's Charles Chen who wins it, 26th in the world. Um, Karel Ungunu eventually uh, came second in the tournament, but you know he is from our other save, um, a bit of a bogey player. And you can see our, our player here, he got all the way through, uh, got knocked out in the round of 16. In fact, the very next round... Um, no, the well, the round after that, yeah. So he, so I, yeah, I felt we gave him a good match. Perhaps could have done a little bit better, maybe looking at how he's kind of struggled against various other people. But we are certainly in the conversation, aren't we? We were certainly able to compete with this level of player, which tells me an awful lot. Anyway, folks, didn't I quite get the length of episode I hope to do here? But if you did enjoy that anyway, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye.